going to be, I think, pretty easy. 4E and 4F. Um, I'm only going to do the content today. You don't have to finish both 4E and 4F today. I'm just going to cut the content today because they're both very similar. 4F is just a bit of high degree of complexity. Okay, so the same concepts, 4F just takes a little bit further. So we've got our notes there, um, and we've done this with quadratics, and hopefully we've seen a number of relationships there with quadratics. Hopefully we've seen, we can draw all of that together today. So, when we have uh, it just crossing the x-axis, that's what we call a linear factor. Okay, a linear factor, that means we can express it as a single factor. So, we've got here, we've got three linear factors. It's cutting the x-axis here, here, and here. So what that means is we're going to set it up like this, we're going to have y equals a times, and just like a quadratic, like if you were to just look at that part and go that's a quadratic, you would write this as oh, x take 1 times x take 2, but then we've got this third one in here as well, which is x take minus 3. The same rules apply, alright? So we're not doing anything radically different from when we're doing quadratics, we're just adding in a degree of complexity, we're just adding that part in there. So, that's going to be an x plus 3. And then we need to solve this value of a. We always need to solve the value of a because that's going to affect the dilation when we're stretched, how far it's stretched or compressed. So we've got this coordinate here. We need to use one coordinate. Who knows where it is? Here it is. This is an extra piece of information. When x is 0, y is positive 3. So we are going to plug that piece of information into our function here. So that's going to be, um, we'll put 3 there, and we've got A times, I'm plugging 0 everywhere there's an X is. So I'm going to have minus 1 times minus 2 times positive 3. One, minus 1 times minus 2 is positive 2, times 3 is positive 6. So I've got 3 is equal to 6a, so a is 3 on 6 or half. So the equation of this cubic is going to be half times x take 1 times x take 2 times x plus 3. Alright? And if you graph this in your calculator, it's going to graph that exactly. Alright? You're going to have the same function. That's how we're generating. Let's have a look at the next one. All right, this time um, we've got it coming down. It's touching, going back up, and then coming down and crossing. So this is what we've seen. When when it cuts the x-axis, we have a single root. So we can start this one as a times x take two. All right. When it touches, we have a squared root. So right here, it's touching. And so that means we're going to have x take minus 1 squared, alright? And so I've listed all of the possible ways it's going, to, it's going to manifest. We've got a cut, we've got a touch, we're going to see a cubed root in a moment. It's a flat cut and then a flat touch. And they're just going to compound as n values increase, but we only look at these four circumstances. So, let's apply this here. And we need to use a piece of information. We've got the y intercept is 4 again. When x is 0, y is 4. So let's plug that in. So all I did there is plug that piece of information in and solve for the value of a, and then I've restated the quadratic, uh, the cubic. Okay. Now I know this is a cubic function, all right, because 
we've got a squared factor and a single linear factor. And if we multiply x by x squared, we're going to get x to the power of 3. So the leap of degrees is a cube. Now, it may say, uh, find and fully expand. So they want you to write the cubic in general form. It may say, write it in the form y equals ax3 plus bx squared plus cx plus d. It doesn't say to do that here, but I'm just going to show you one example of how you would fully expand it. All we have to do is like FOIL or perfect square um, and distributive law until it's fully expanded and then multiply the two through. So I'm going to start with, if, if it says to expand it, I'm going to start with this part and just apply the perfect square law there. Bam, let's expand that. That's going to be x squared plus 2x plus 1. a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Then I'm going to FOIL this part through. Well, not, it's not FOIL because it's not two linear brackets, but it's, it's just distributive law. So I'm going to multiply that x through first, and then the minus 2 through first. And this minus 2 is just going to hang out in the front for the time being. So the minus 2, we're going to have x to the 3 plus 2x squared plus x. Take 2x squared. Uh, take 4x and take 2. Now, when we were doing it with the unknowns, we were writing one on top of the other, so we can collect like terms. You're welcome to do that here when you're performing that expansion if you want to. Um, so if I'm collecting like terms, they're going to cancel. And they're going to collect as well. So we're going to have minus 2 times x to the 3. x take 4x. That's going to be minus 3x, and then take 2. And now finally, let's multiply that minus 2. Okay. So, what have we done? This function, have what we started with, and this function down here are the same thing. They're just different ways of representing the cubic. And so if you graph this in general form, if you graph this in fully factorised form, they're both going to look like this. They're just different ways of representing it. And they tell us different pieces of information. From here, you can see, I think, two things very clearly, two pertinent things. Firstly, that it's a cubic, the leading degree is to the power of 3. And the y intercept is 4. Okay, when x is 0, y is 4. This form's particularly useful because what it tells us is it cuts the x axis at 2 and touches at minus 1. Okay, so this tells us the roots, the x-intercepts, the zeros, the factors. This tells us the y-intercept and the leading degree. Let's move on to the next one. We've got, that's, that point there is zero. And we've got this point down here is one. Uh, sorry, we're not going to get from that point. Two, we've got zero, two. And we've got this coordinate here, which is minus 1, x is minus 1, y is 2. Okay, so this here is an example of what we call a flat cut. Okay, so notice, notice in here it's just cuts, 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 here it's just cutting straight through 2. Here it comes down, it goes through it, but the slope is almost horizontal, it's almost parallel to the x-axis at the point. And so this is what we call a flat cut because it's going horizontal at that point. And so when we have a flat cut, that means we have a cubed factor. All right? Now it's happening at zero. So that means we're going to have x take zero to the power of three. Okay, we can simplify this in a moment, but just for now, I want to say whatever the value is where the flat cuts are occurring, it is a cubed root. All right? And then we have that times by this linear factor here, x take 2. You can very clearly see the difference between these two things. Right? Sharp cut, flat cut. So that's going to be a cubed factor. Like in the test, they're going to be hyper-exaggerated. So you'll be able to see it very clearly. Now just to simplify, okay, this term here, all right, um, x take 0 to the power of 3, it's just going to be x to the power of 3. Uh, if you were to expand that, every other term is going to have a zero in it, and so that the only term that remains is going to be the x to the power of three. So we've got yeah a times um, 
x to the 3 times x take 2. <coughs> now we need to find this value of a. So we're looking for what's another useful piece of information. The y-intercept is not going to be useful, all right, because when x is 0, y is 0, and so that's not going to help us solve a. We need to use this. So we've got when x is 1, minus 1, y is 3. So let's put that in. Positive 3 equals a times, now we're putting minus 1 in there. Minus 1 to the power of 3 times minus 1 take 2. Now minus 1 to the power of 3, when you can work that out, it's minus 1 times minus 1 times minus 1. So it's going to be minus 1. Alright, the other way to think about it is a negative number, this is a pattern you might notice, a negative number to an odd power, so to the power of 3, or to the power of 5, or to the power of 7, or to the power of uh, 9 or 11, it's always going to be negative. Okay, because you think if you have minus 1 times minus 1, alright, well that's going to be positive 1. And then you know, you're, you're adding in another multiplying it by the third power, so we've got minus 1 to the power of 3, well it's going to make it negative. So every time there's an even power, well, they're all going to be positive. Anytime it's an odd power, it's going to, their answer is going to be negative. Okay, so we've got minus 1, and then here we're going to have minus 1 time, uh, take 2, because that's going to be minus 3. And so we've got 3 equals a times by 3, and so we've got a is 1, and therefore the equation of this cube is x to the 3 times x take 2. We don't need to put that one out the front. Uh, that is obsolete, but the value of a is positive 1. Now, I'll just rub it to the answer. Okay, so just turn the page because we'll go through these next couple of examples. Because here, we started with a graph and we generated the function. Uh, what we're doing here is we're starting with a, um, some words. Okay? So you could graph that straight away, or we could find the equation and then and then graph from there as well. But we've got cuts at 2, minus 2, and 3, uh, and has a y-intercept of minus 24. Okay? So, if we think about that, we're going to have a times, well it's cutting the x-axis at 2, so we're going to have x take 2, it's cutting at minus 2, so we're going to have x take minus 2, and it's cutting at 3, so we're going to have x take 3. Alright, and then we've got a y-intercept of 24, when x is 0, y is 24, minus 24. Let's plug that information in. Like you can put that in your calculator, okay, or we can just put it on a card seat and blame from the information we've got here. We know, alright, it's going to cut at minus 2, it's going to cut at positive 2, and it's going to cut at positive 3. And it has a y-intercept of minus 24. So with those, with those pieces of information, like you're just so limited on the shape that's going to have. Like it has to go through here, has to pass through that point. So it has to be like this. All right, so that's minus two, that's two, that's three. And that's what the function's gonna look like. You can label the x and y axes and label the function. Okay, one more. Let's do this here. touches the x-axis at minus 3 and positive 2. So because it touches, that means it's going to be a squared factor. 
So we're going to have x take minus, uh, minus 3 and x take 2. So it touches at minus 3 and it touches at positive 2. So, by the way, you can just write that straight away if you can recognise when it's touching left of the y axis. Um, we can just put it like that. Okay, you, you don't have to do this first step. All right, and our other piece of information, y intercept of 36. When x is zero, y is 36. Intercepts positive 36, and then it's touching at minus 3 and positive 2. Right, so that's enough to get into uh, three, uh, 4e and 4f. Hopefully we're feeling right about uh, seeing the relationships there, stuff that we did with quadratics. Uh, just that table at the top, I'll just point that out again. They're the four options that are going to pop up. Um, so you'll either have a cutting, or we've written there crossing, touching, a flat cut, or a flat touch, but they're pretty rare, and you'll only see them before. Okay, let's get into it.